In this video, you learn everything how to build up a Luxon cabinet from scratch, a few super important tips that almost no partner knows, and I show you the one mistake I see almost everywhere I go to fix stuff. Let me show you. In this little demo cabinet I only use for the videos, we will see everything from the incoming power line to the RCD until the 24 volt of the mini server and the stuff it can switch and how to use the proper breakers for it. But one super important thing, I cannot know the regulations in your country, so everything I show you here is just the schematics and how it typically works, but always consider a local electrician who knows exactly what's going on in your country. In Austria, we have a three-phase system. We have here phase one, two, three, the neutral and the protective earth. From this main power coming, we go onto our RCD, which has several breakers connected in my case. There might be countries where the breaker and the RCD are combined, like this device here. Here in Austria, the RCD is checking every single breaker and the breakers itself, for instance, here this one, B16, is going off once the current is higher than 16 amp for a certain amount of time depending on the characteristics. You could of course say one of the breakers like this one here is now used for the lock zone. Power supply is 24 volt, we have a look on this in a second, but one major issue I see here is let's say this one is the kitchen and maybe in the kitchen there is a mistake which triggers the RCD and not the breaker, then for all the breakers connected here, there is no more power, also not for Luxon. To prevent this, I'm using a dedicated one-phase breaker RCD combination, which is then connected to, in this case, two 24-volt power supplies from Meanwell. So whatever happens on this side of the house, nothing affects the Luxon system, and I'm using another one typically for the network. As you know, the mini server and the whole Luxon system is powered by 24 volt here. Depending on how many devices you have, then you need a power supply capable of handling the load of these devices, which is not very much in most cases. And what I always do here as well is I use a dedicated, in this case, 1.5 ampere power supply only for the mini server and maybe its extensions, let's say a relay extension, digital input extension, airbase extension and so on, not for the push buttons and everything else. Same story if there is a short circuit on the push button side or whatever, then the mini server's power supply is not affected by it as well. But now when we talk about a second or even more power supplies, then comes the greatest mistake in Luxon Partners history, I believe, which is not having the power supplies ground connected to one another. Which leads to super, super bad mistakes. Let's say sometimes when the alarm system is triggering or when all the blinds go up in the whole house, then the system is behaving weirdly. I cannot reproduce it, it's only sometimes, I hope that does not sound familiar to you, this often is the result of the same topic, that this one power supply here does not have the same zero volt reference as the other power supplies. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the tree and the link bus, so from the mini server to its extensions, I think it's 5 volt, I'm not 100% sure. So if there is a slight difference between the zero volt from this one to the zero volt of that one, for whatever reason, this might lead to bad communication and especially if there is a lot of things happening. All the blinds go up or when the alarm system is blinking, all the lights in the house, what is happening? The mini server sends lots of commands also to the extensions. Relay extension number three, relay two, four, five, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. So that's when lots of traffic is going on. Then this mistake with not connecting the grounds is making problems, which is super simple to fix. You simply connect the minus from this one to the minus of the other power supplies in the system. In my case, I went here to the terminal block, which I love, as you guys know. 
So there is a connection from this to this. Please do not mix it up. This is only for the minus, not for the plus. Now that the mini server is up and running, we could expand the system with extension modules, let's say a relay extension. Then I typically just go from the plus and the link with two twisted pair cables to the next extension. What is super important here is to always go in a line like this. The first thing I always check is how many cables are connected to the blue clamp on the mini server, which can only be one cable. At the very end of the link bus here, the last extension, we need to put a 120 ohm resistor between blue and white. This is against reflections on the bus. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's Khan bus here, the link. Then we have the locks on tree bus. There is a tree extension with two of these branches on it. The mini server compact and normal mini server have one tree branch, so you can connect up to 50 devices per each branch. I typically plan for 30 and then I take another tree extension because you never know what other devices Loxon brings to the market. So I'd like to have some spare ones on each tree line. I typically put the 24 volt and the tree branches on those Weidmüller terminal blocks. There is different sizes available. Here is an eight row clamp. This one is a four row clamp, but take care. Typically those ones do not fit nicely in the normal cabinets if you're not able to mount the DIN rail further back. And as you see, this clamp here is connecting every input on both sides here. So whatever you put here, 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 here is always connected to everything else. These clamps are perfect, same as for the orange one here, to distribute 24 volt or also the tree bus line. There is other versions like this one here with eight inputs and here only the first row is connected to the first row. So these two up here to these two here. And then second row to the second here. This is perfect for putting a cat cable with eight inputs onto the cabinet. And then we could have seven window contacts, for example, back to the digital inputs here. The small version of this one here is the black clamp here. I'm using this for 24 volt inputs here. Let's now say we would like to use one digital input for the super simple push button here. We need two wires, 24 volt coming. And then once I press the button, then the light should go on. It's a 230 volt line on this breaker here. How would I do this? Typically, not at all, because I'm using the locks on push buttons in the bus topology. But just for this example here, I'm using once here the 24 volt of this clamp, and then I'm going back to this first digital input. So these four cables here go all the way down to the mini server's four digital inputs. And the first one I think was the red one. Yes, that's correct. So once I press the button, the mini server receives the 24 volt signal and the logic I programmed in the Loxon 3 basic training is then turning on the lamp. Which closes the first relay. I am going from this breaker here and that's important if you say, okay, this lamp is in the living room, then I would also take care that the breaker which is used for this lamp is also for the living room. So I go from this breaker here, the first one, I go down to the relay's input here. And when the relay is switched, I go back up and then this goes to the lamp. And I'm using terminal blocks here as well, because as I said, I love them. These are from Weidmüller as well. It makes life so much easier to me because then I can build cabinets nicely in the workshop, in the office, and then I can deliver them on site and then you only need to connect the cables. There is labels as well. And then it's like terminal block number one equals sockets. Then terminal block number two equals this one here, which goes to the lamp. I almost forgot the LAN connection, the network connection here. There is also DIN rail mounted connections here. So then you only have to connect the LAN cable coming up here and not all the way to the mini server. RGBW dimmer is a device I always use as well because this one has RGBW. So you need one dimmer for one color light. This can be LED strips, but also there is like 
24 volt PWM lamps which have color light or you can also switch it like in the video up here to four times white or two times tunable. So if you have five wall spots, you could have 10 spots per each channel, four rooms in total, so super cheap, 25 bucks per channel. Of course, in addition, the power supply, but still a super nice way to have dimmable light, LED strips or also 24 volt light fittings in your smart home system. And here you have to calculate how strong is the power supply here. The dimmer is capable of 200 watts, but it's super rare that I use so many of it. This one will have 100 watts of load, the next 150, the other one only 50. And then I know, okay, how many of those dimmers can I put on each power supply? In the office cabinet, I am using the Luxon power and backup, which is super powerful, 40 ampere, on seven channels, which have these little fuses, as you might know, already built in. So you're also safe on the DC side. Here I'm always using the first channel for the mini server and its extensions with two ampere, the next channel for the push buttons and present sensors. And then you have four more outputs for, let's say, dimmable channels, the music, whatever else you have. Here you see the cabinet is a little bigger. I have a mini server, the normal one, the bigger one with eight outputs and then another relay extension connected to it. And at the end I have an air base. And you see here is the 120 ohm resistor at the end. Sorry, I don't have proper lighting here. And what I always do with the air base inside of a metal cabinet, I go with the antenna out of the cabinet up there to have a proper signal. And now let's have a look on a few nice cabinets on the PC. I always forget to put on a proper shirt without yellow or green in it so that the green screen does not do this crazy effect. This is a cabinet for a flat, I think 120 square meters. That's everything, including the RCD breaker for also the sockets, the oven for the kitchen, everything is included here. I have the main power coming. It's a sub cabinet. That's why there is no meter in here. But you see here, I'm using two RCD breaker combinations, one for the mini server, one for the network, so the LAN and all this stuff. Then we have the Luxon power supply and backup here, 40 amps, super nice. Audio server, a few stereo extensions. And here I have it opened. I have the mini server here. Then we have three airbase, a few RGBW dimmers, and I have the 120 ohm resistor actually as a 3D printed thing below here. Then up here we have the high voltage side here. X1 means the first RCD. Then we have the RCD2, 3, 4 and so on. Then we have all the permanent power sockets, switchable lights, blinds up and down, everything is connected here. And up there we have the low voltage side. We have the different tree connections from the mini server or the tree extension here, left and right branch, and the tree of the mini server here. Then we have the different dimmer outputs here, mostly for RGBW, if I remember correctly. Here I have a super special cabinet, which was shipped to Malta internationally. There is a local electrician who did a dedicated high voltage cabinet for the permanent power, the oven and everything else, which I typically do not like. But let's check it out first. We have a mini server and a relay extension here. But as you see here, three DALI extensions, what the fuck? Yeah, because it's a super, super huge project with lots of lamps. One DALI extension can handle up to 64 lights and we have three of them. Also, you see we have two tree extensions, 100 devices each, so 200 plus the 50 of the mini server, 250 in total, possible. I think it was 180 or so. Then we have a few breakers here. Then we have lots of connections for the different rooms, the DALI lines, the switchable outputs of the relay extension and stuff. And then we have here the different tree branches. And why I don't like it is because, as I said previously, we need to be able to switch off the living room's breaker and the end customer has to be sure there is no more power in this room. So we need from the other cabinet lots of connections, lots of cables for each room, for each breaker to be able to switch it in our Luxon cabinet. That's why I typically like to put it into one cabinet. Let me show you a crazy example at the end. This was in Vienna. The end customer pulled all the cables, did all the piping himself 
and it's super crazy because he used the Cat7 cable for every single Loxone touch, for every present sensor, each device, one cable. So I believe it was 70 or something in total here. And there was two cabinets like this. It was four floors. So there is a second cabinet exactly as crazy as this one. So I pulled all the CAT cables onto those terminal blocks here, the blue ones I showed you, inside of the cabinets. Sometimes it was used for window contact, so we used all the eight inputs, or maybe only six, to put them on digital inputs here. Sometimes it was used for tree, so the push button, the present sensor, then only four wires were used. So I bridged all the tree, tree minus, plus 24, um, depending if the cable needed it. Then we have the high voltage side here. These loose cables you see here are the technical room. So the room I was standing in. So we could have light during installation. These have been removed at the very end. But otherwise it's the same story. Mini server, extensions, go from one to the next to the next. And then we have dimmers here, RGB dimmers. They were used for tunable lights in this project here. These were used for RGBW. Cool that you made it to the end of this video. Hope you got some nice insights from it. Consider subscribing and if you like this video, please show it with a thumbs up. I need to push the subscribers on the English channel. Help me out on this and I will push out constantly nice new content for you. See you in the next video. Thanks a lot.